By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we have reached the finals of the Four Horsemen Popper tournament. So Four Horsemen Popper, a format where you can only play with cards from the Four Horsemen sets, Arabian Nights, Antiquities, Legends and the Dark. And Popper means you can only play with common cards. And here in the finals we have Alex playing Burning Junkyard versus Tom and he's on Burning Skies. Both of these decks are blue and red. Now before I jump over to the deck decks, I've got beautiful deck photos of both of these decks, I would first like to tell you that as always, you can skip the introduction, skip the deck decks, just go straight to that awesome finals. And the easiest way to, to do that is by checking out the description below and there you will find several timestamps. One of these timestamps reads MTG Games, click on there, that will take you straight to the action. And in the description below, you can also find more information about the tournament setup, about the rules of this tournament. And there's also a link to the tournament website where you can find deck pictures of all of the 50 decks that participated in this tournament. Exactly, we had 50 wizards and now only two of them remain. Alex versus Tom and we're going to start with the deck decks. I'm going to start with the deck Burning a Junkyard by Alex. And here we see the deck of Alex Burning Junkyard. So Burning Junkyard is also a blue and red deck just like Tom but it does have a different strategy. First of all the deck has a lot more junk because I guess that's why it's called Junkyard. It's got a lot of old scrap in the form of artifacts. We see three Brass Man, three Onulet, three Primal Clay and two Jalem Tomes. And these cards go together really well with the cards Sage of Latinam and Orcish Mechanics. So both of these cards are in the deck of Alex as well. Orcish Mechanics, one red and two to cast for a 1-1 one, one creature. And you can tap it, second artifact to deal two damage to any target. And then you have Sage of Latinam, one blue and one for a 1-2 creature. Tap and you can sacrifice an artifact to draw a card. So that is of course pretty good. So what Tom can do, or sorry, what Alex can do later in the game is he can trade his artifacts for direct damage or for cards with these uh, Sages of Latinam and this one Orcish Mechanics. Quite useful and also really nice Orcish Mechanics with, for example, Pyrotechnics and Brothers of Fire. Then when we look at the rest of the deck, we see, of course, the Blue Flyers, Azur Drakes and Ghost Ships. Tom is playing those as well. Then we see Pyrotechnics, Chain Lightning, we see Fisher. So this is all basically removal. And then we see a card I haven't seen this often in the tournament, but a very good card nonetheless, Remove Soul. One blue and one to cast for this card from the uh, Legends expansion. It is a counter spell, but it only counters creatures. But this format is very creature heavy, so it's actually pretty good and pretty useful. I believe Tom is playing these as well in his sideboard. Talking about the sideboard, we see active volcanoes and flesh floods. I think both players are going to board those in. And then we also see an anti-magic aura. I don't think that's gonna be that relevant in this matchup. We see an artifact blast from antiquities. Again, I don't think that's gonna be played. Unstable mutations could see some play. And I also think that Boomerang could be handy to come in from the sideboard. And I think that uh, Alex is definitely going to board out that Flood, considering all the creatures of Tom have flying. So Flood can't really do anything against this opponent. So this is uh, the deck of Alex. Maybe one card to point out, because I think we saw Burning Junkyard earlier in this video series. And um, if my mind is correct, I believe that Brothers of Fire played a vital role in Alex's victory in that specific match. So don't underestimate this card, Brothers of Fire, a 2-2 creature from the dark for two red and one. You can deal one damage to any target and you also take one damage as the player. This sounds pretty bad, but trust me, later on in the game, this is just really, really good and can just get those extra points of damage in that you need to win the game. Okay, now that we've looked at Alex's deck, let's take a look at the deck of his opponent, Burning Skies by Tom. Let's have a look. And here we see the deck of Tom Burning Skies. And of course that refers to the burn, that is the four chain lightnings and the four pyrotechnics. And then the skies refers to all the flying creatures in the deck, Flying Man, Sephir Falcon, Azur Drake, Ghost Ship. So this is really heavy in on the flyer strategy and he's combining that with four unstable mutations trying to beef up his cheap flyers and try to get some more damage in and he's also playing with two sunken cities so that is pretty cool he's only playing with blue creatures so i guess the sunken cities make sense in this build playing with one boomerang one gaseous form and four jalem tomes now i've talked about the jalem tome before um, it's three to cast two and tap this uh, draw card and discard a card now this is one of the only cards 
in the format that actually allows you to kind of do some card selection with your deck. It allows you to go through your deck faster. And this card is just super good, especially later in the game when you're land flooded, you can start trading the lands in your hand for actually useful cards from your deck. And with useful cards, I mean, big creatures like a ghost ship, maybe some removal like pyrotechnics, and those cards can actually win you the game. I've seen Tom doing that in previous matches. So Jalem Tome is definitely a, a card to keep an eye on. Then again, from the sideboard, as I mentioned with Alex, we see Flesh Flood, we see Active Volcano. These cards are really good. Perhaps he's gonna board in Remove Soul as well. He could consider boarding in the Desert Nomads because Burning Junkyard does play with some desert. So that might be interesting. He's probably not going to, but it could be a consideration for him. Okay, so this is the deck of Tom. We've looked at the deck of Alex. That means we're ready. Let's go to the finals. Game number one, here we go of the finals of the Four Horsemen Popper Tournament. So we see Tom is on the play. He's playing a blue and a red Skies deck called Burning Skies. And he's playing against Alex, who's also on blue and red. And he's playing a deck that he's called Burning Junkyard. It's got a lot of artifact synergies in the deck. And uh, both players just starting with a land drop. Tom, you're taking on his second turn and a pass. So no Sephir Falcon or a Flying Man from Tom here. Alex playing an island as well. Let's see if he can make a play. Not casting anything though. Passing turn back to Tom. So very uh, slow start by both players. There we see a second island by Tom. Six uh, cards in hand there and it seems to be just a pass. Alex playing a desert. Could be relevant later in the game. I do know that, do know that Tom has some uh, desert nomads in the sideboard. There is an Onulet. So it's a 2 2 for 3 from the Antiquities expansion. And when it dies, I believe you gain 2 life. Could be 3 life as well. I always mix those uh, up. 2 or 3 life. We'll see when it dies. There we see a ghost ship by Tom. So this is really what Tom wants to, to do. Play ghost ships and azure drakes. And fly his way into victory. He's also playing with unstable mutations. So he has the option to make his ghost ship into a 5-7. And here we see Alex play another mountain. I wonder if we're going to see some removal from Alex. Cannot play Pyrotechnics yet. Need, needs an extra mana. So there's the attack with the Onulet. Kind of signaling to, to Tom that Alex probably has a Chain Lightning in hand. That would mean he would lose the Onulet and then the Chain Lightning on the Ghost Ship. I wonder what Tom's going to do. Is he going to block and kind of accept a trade? It is a 2 for 1 then. Nope, he's taking the damage. Going to drop to 18. There we see a double Chain Lightning on the boat. <laughs> <laughs> Alex really wants to get rid of that boat as quickly as possible, willing to invest two chain lightnings to get rid of one boat. And now he's playing a brass man, a 1-3 creature for one. And now when you attack with it, it doesn't untap the next turn. You can pay one during your upkeep to untap it. A card originally from the Arabian Nights expansion. I actually also played with brass man, so I'm kind of happy to see it here in the finals. It was a pretty good blocker. The problem is it didn't kill anything, but it was pretty useful to block, for example, Curd Apes. There we see a Chain Lightning on the Onulet. So Alex is going to gain some life. So, yep, two lives. So he's going to go up to 22. And Tom is going to cast a Zephyr Falcon here, the 1-1 one, one flyer that you don't have to tap when it attacks. Works really well in Stasis decks. I remember people used to play this uh, creature next to Stasis. And Tom, you're on three and a pass turn. So Alex here finding another card. There is another land. So three mountains for him. Attacking with the Brass Man. Tom is probably just going to take the damage. Drop to 17 here. And Alex, of course, has that desert against the Sephir Falcon as well. So I'm not sure if Alex really wants to kill the Sephir. Going to tap three red. Is there going to be a Brothers of Fire, perhaps? No, there's going to be the Jalem Tome, and he's got two mana open to use it as well. He can do that on end step, of course, of Tom, if he wants to. So three cards in hand, it seems, for Alex, and four cards in hand, I believe, for Tom. Alex on 22, and Tom here on 17. Okay, so Alex has got two cards. I guess Tom just asked how many cards do you have in hand. I wonder, one of the options in the deck of Tom is perhaps playing an Unstable Mutation on the Sephir Falcon. 
and that way he would have a blocker for the brass man as well and uh, the desert can no longer kill the Sefri falcon so that could definitely be an option for him tapping one red okay chain lightning interesting taking care here of the brass man tapping one playing the unstable mutation so it's gonna hit for four So that means that uh, Alex is going to drop to 18. And Tom is going to play something else as well. Another Sephir Falcon. The problem, of course, with Flying Man and Sephir Falcon is that they are so vulnerable to end pyrotechnics and desert. That was the reason that I didn't play them in my deck. But now looking at Tom, since he reached the finals, I guess they're good enough, especially in combination with Sunken City. He's playing two of those and in combination with Unstable Mutation. Here we see Alex tapping two mountains. What else? Tapping a third one, an island. Ooh, there's an Orcish Mechanics. So I guess it's good that Tom took care of the Brassman earlier or else Alex could have used the Brassman to deal two damage to any target. You know, sack it through his Orcish Mechanics. And now we're going to see the Sephir Falcon going from a 4-4 to a 3-3. I mean, it's still good. He could uh, attack Alex, put him here on 15. Tom is playing with Fisher, So if he can find a second red, perhaps he can play a Fisher on the desert. Could be an option for him. Putting Alex here on 15. And what else can he do? Tapping five mana. Are we going to see a Pyrotechnics? Oh, a Pyrotechnics killing the mechanics and dealing three more points of damage to Alex here. Again, showing the immense strength of Pyrotechnics. So now, and you're dealing Lightning Bolt damage to a player and you're removing a creature from the game. It is really good. Alex taking his turn. He also has a Pyrotechnics, so he can kill both creatures Remember, Pyrotechnics allows you to deal 4 damage any way you choose, so you can divide it any way you want to without paying any extra mana. So killing both Sephir Falcons here, both boards are clear now. We see Alex on 12 and Tom who's on 17. One card in hand for Alex and one card in hand for Tom, so it's a very equal matchup so far. Alex, of course, having that one Jalum Tome, that could be an advantage for him. Let's see what Tom's uh, gonna do in his turn. Two cards in hand, I believe, after the draw. Tapping blue, two blue, three blue. There's a Jalum Tome, so now both players have a Jalum Tome. It's really an equal playing field. And a pass turn, no activation of the Tome. So I guess a card in Alex's hand is worth it to keep. Now he's activating the Tome. Discarding a Mountain. That makes sense, of course. Can he play a creature or a threat here on the board? That's the big question. Tapping four. Okay, there's a primal clay. Is he going to make it a 3-3 three, three or a 2-2 two, two flyer? He is making it a 3-3 three, three creature. Very interesting. Also because Tom, of course, only has flyers anyway. So this is a very good decision by Alex. Let's see if Tom can find something to block it with. If he can find an Azur Drake or a ghost ship, he's fine. First using the Jalum Tome as well. What is he going to uh, to discard? Discarding an island, so also a land card. Tom, of course, still on 17. Tapping a blue. Okay, there's a Flying Man. Now that Flying Man, not too powerful because of the desert on the side of Alex. So Alex can probably swing in for three points here. So attacking with the 3-3. Three, three. Tom taking the damage, gonna drop to 14. And there we see Alex tapping two red to activate his tome. Discarding another land card. Tapping three, untapping it. Okay, tapping three. There's a Brothers of Fire. That's of course ideal against that flying man as well. Keeping the desert untapped. So things are looking pretty good for Alex here. Also playing an island, so nothing in hand anymore for Alex. So that island basically means that he's got enough mana to deal two points of damage with the Brothers of Fire and keep his desert untapped. If Tom can find... I wanted to say a Pyrotechnics, but because the Primal Clay is a 3-3, he doesn't have enough damage to kill both of them. 
Alex on 12, Tom at the moment on 14. And I believe Thomas got two cards in hand now, if I'm not mistaken. He can still activate his Jalen Tone, draw a card, discard a card. That's what he's going to do right now. Trying to dig for answers. Discarding a Sunken City. Interesting, because Sunken City would have made his Flying Man a 2-2. Does that mean that he's got another Sunken City in hand? There's another Sunken City. Making his Flying Man a 2-2, attacking, dealing 2 points of damage to Alex. So he's going to drop to 10, but of course next turn... Oh, Chain Lightning on the Brothers. This is important, because I wanted to say next turn Alex can kill the 2-2 Flying Man. But he, he needs the Brothers of Fire to do that. Brothers of Fire is now gone. So Alex is on 10, Tom's on 14. Alex can attack, of course, with the Primal Clay, putting Tom here on 11. Remember, Sunken City does have an upkeep cost of two blue. Alex here putting his card away and passing the turn with an untapped Jalen Tome. So now Tom has to pay two or let the Sunken City go. He's gonna pay two for it, that makes sense. Going to draw a card for turn. I believe just one card in hand for Tom here. So he's in top decking mode. Attacking for two, putting Alex on eight. This is going to be a very close match. Ooh, he's got a Fisher though. He is going to kill the Flying Man with the Fisher. So now Alex is also in top decking mode. Tom, of course, still having that one card in hand. I wonder what that one card is. Passing the turn with the one card in hand. Untap here of the Primal Clay. So Primal Clay can attack again, putting three damage in. That would put Tom on eight. So there's the attack by Alex. Tom's going to drop to eight. Alex tapping a red. There's a Brass Man. Okay, it's extra damage. Every little thing helps. Remember, Alex is also playing with Orcish Mechanics and the Sage of Latinam, so no cards in hand for Alex anymore. He's showing it there. So even artifacts that are not that great can still have value later in the game because of the Sage and the Orcish Mechanics. Tom untapping here. Is he going to pay the two for the Sunken City? Nope, he's going to let it die. Does that mean that he's got something in hand that he wants to cast? Perhaps a, a flyer like a Ghost Ship or an Azur Drake. Tapping four here, casting the Azur Drake. That will allow him to block the 3-3. Three, three. Passing turn here. If Alex can top deck removal, he can deal four points of damage. He can still deal some damage by attacking with both, of course. Alex here, using the Jalum Tome. I mean, those Tomes just really help you to find the cards you need. Let's see what he's going to discard. He's a little bit in the tank, it seems. Discarding an Artifact Blast. That's a card coming in from the sideboard. Attacking here with both. There we see a block on the 3-3. So he's just taking a damage. There's a Chain Lightning. Whoa, killing the Azur Drake. And he actually took the 3 damage, by the way. No, he just took the one damage, it seems, because he's dropping to seven. But this is bad news for Tom. He's on seven, looking at those two creatures, a 3-3 three, three and a 1-3. Does have the Jalem Tone to activate. I believe he's only got one card in hand, maybe two cards. Tom needs to find an answer to the 3-3. Three, three. That's the first point of business. He's on seven. If he cannot do anything, he'll be on three next turn. Tapping five here. Okay, there's a Pyrotechnic. So he's going to kill the 3-3, three, three, deal one damage to Alex probably. So he's going to go to nine. So that's something. Brassman is getting untapped there. Alex is using a Mountain to do that. He's going to attack Put Tom on six. Or not. Is he going to do something else before? First using his Jalen Tone before attacking. He's going to draw a card, discard a card. Discarding a land. Attacking for one. Putting Tom on six. 
Tapping four, are we gonna see another creature? There's an Azur Drake. Ooh, this is really bad for Tom. Again, pressure by Alex. Is Alex gonna win game number one here? Tapping four, there's a ghost ship. I mentioned earlier, by the way, that the artifact blast was coming from the sideboard, but that is wrong, of course, because this is game one, so that's not possible. So I guess it's in the main. I'm mixing uh, some deck photos up here. Anyway, that being said, Alex is definitely uh, on the verge of winning, but now he has to get rid of that uh, ghost ship. The ghost ship being a perfect blocker, but of course, Alex can still attack with both. So he's going to block the Azur Drake, I assume, and he's going to drop to five, taking a damage from the Brass Man. And no Chain Lightning here from Alex. So that's good news for Tom. If he can just play another Flyer here, he is fine. Ooh, look at that tapping four. There's another Ghost Ship. Tom's back into this. Ho, ho, ho. On the verge of losing. And now he's back. And he's untapping the Brass Man there. Tom needs to find some removal. Gonna tap five. Are we gonna see Pyrotechnics getting rid of one of the ships? Attacking with both. He could have used the Pyrotechnics as well on the life total. But this way he also deals damage and he's got uh, rid of the ghost ship. So I think this is a better decision. Tom on four now. So Alex is very close to the victory, but he's not there yet. And remember the Brass Man, of course, only has one power. So even though Tom is only on four, it's going to take a long time before he gets there. Tom asking uh, to see the graveyard to kind of estimate how many burn spells he's played so far. Look at all those chain lightnings in there. He's found a lot of burn this turn, Alex. And the reason for that, of course, is that Jalem Tome. You know, he keeps just using the Jalem Tome, going through his deck faster, finding the cards he needs. And usually burn are the kind of cards that you want to keep because they're so versatile, especially the pyrotechnics. Let's see what Tom can do. It's still his turn. Attacking him for two. Interesting. Putting Alex on seven. Does that mean he's got another flyer to cast? Tapping five. Oh, pyrotechnics. Getting rid of the flyer here. So both players finding a lot of pyrotechnics. And Alex, of course, untapping the Brass Man. He can put Tom on three. This is such a close game number one. Attacking here. Gonna put Tom on three. He's so close. Remember, he has played out a lot of direct damage, though. There's not that much left in his deck. Tapping two red and one. Is this gonna be a Brothers of Fire? That can grant him the victory, actually. No tapping four instead. Are we going to see another flyer? There's an Azur Drake. Also great for Alex because it can block the ghost ship. And next turn he can put some, uh, some more pressure on. Alex being on seven. Tom being on three. If both players can find the right cards. They can win this. Tom activating the Jalem Tome. Throwing away a Jalem Tome. There is a mountain. Is he going to tap four? What is he going to play? Another flyer? There is another ghost ship. This is really good news for Tom. So there we go again. So Alex has to find answers to these flying creatures. And is he going to untap the brass man? That is the big question. It looks like he's doubting. He's thinking about, you know, maybe I should just let it tap. Do I really need that one mana? He is choosing to untap. I mean, he can still cast a creature for four and have two open for the Jalem Tome. What has he found? That is the big question. Tapping four, five even. There is a Fisher taking care of one of the pirate ships. Sorry, the ghost ships, of course. And now he can attack with both. Dealing a damage again. Gonna put Tom on two. Wow. And so it was a good decision, by the way, of Alex to untap that Brass Man. Blocking the Drake, taking the damage from the Brass Man. That Brass Man has secretly done a lot of work in this, uh, in this game. One card in hand for Alex. And this is really a match of who gets a removal first, who finds it first to clean up the problems. 
and how much damage can you deal in between? Alex on 7, Tom's on 2. If nothing changes here, Tom's going to drop to 1 next turn. Both players having the Jalen Tome to kind of find the cards they want. So I guess if uh, if Tom cannot do anything with what he just drew, he can use his Jalen to draw a new one. He is really in the tank, and I guess that's a good sign for Alex. Now asking how many cards you have in your graveyard, how big is your library still. So Tom really trying to find a way out of this. The question is, can he find a way out of it? Only one card in hand. We'll just have to wait and see what Tom wants to do here. He is taking his time. Attacking here with the ship. Interesting choice, putting Alex on five, playing an Azur Drake. That is pretty good. Alex on five here. And Alex needs to pay the one to untap the Brass Man exactly. Going to go to two cards in hand. Tapping four. Does he have another flyer? There's a primal clay. Okay, could make that into a 2-2. Two -two. Maybe that's a better choice. Sorry, a 3-3, three -three, I mean. Ooh, making it into a 2-2 two -two flyer. That way, of course, he can double block Azure Drake and the 2-2 two -two flyer to kill a flyer of Tom. That kind of makes sense as well. And he has the desert to use also, although it's tapped right now. He's got two mountains open to use his Jalem Tome. Tom on two, Alex on five. And now Alex is the one who's doing the thinking. I mean, he could attack with everything. Well, everything being, of course, the, the Brass Man and the Azure Drake. Then he can deal one damage, put him on one. But then he is opening himself up for Tom attacking with two flyers. The question is, can Tom then still attack with his flyers? Because he should hold them back. It is a risk. The problem is if Alex drops below the five, he's in pyrotechnics range. If he goes on three, he's in um, chain lightning range. So these things are all going through Alex's mind, of course. It looks like he's going to attack, though. Attacking with both creatures, Tom can only block one. So that means he's going to drop to one life. Ooh, this is so exciting. He's on one measly life. If Tom wants to win this, he has to do it the next turn. Untapping for turn. Okay, here we go. Can Tom find a way out of this? If he can find direct damage, he is there because he can attack with both creatures. Then Alex is going to go to three. If he has a chain lightning or a pyrotechnics, he can win the game. If not, he's going to lose here game number one. Looks like he's going to use the Jalem Tome. Yeah, he's going to use the Jalem Tome. Draw a card, discard a card. Hasn't played out a land for turn. That could be important because you want to have five mana to cast Pyrotechnics. So throwing away a mountain there. If he can find another flyer, he's also kind of safe because he can block the creatures of, of Alex. If he has a third creature. One card in hand. Passing turn it seems. Wow. This is exciting stuff. I wonder what that one card in hand can be. If he's got for example a boomerang. That would be interesting. And I wonder if Alex is going to attack with everything here. Taking the risk. Because if then Tom has a boomerang, it would be bad news. Okay, there's a chain lightning. I guess that's it because there are no counter spells in Tom's uh, deck to counter a sorcery. That's it. Oh, man. Whew. That was a crazy game number one. And uh, I understand the players for taking their time, by the way. But um, sometimes I'm like, come on, show me what you have in hand because I'm just that, you know, curious and I want to see the next play. So I hope you guys understand. 
But woo, man, what a game number one. Uh, one. This promises a lot for game number two. So we're going to let these players sideboard and we'll catch up with you in game number two. Game number two, here we go. So Tom still sitting on the left, of course. Alex on the right. Tom won, uh, sorry, Alex won the first game. So Tom is again on the play here. He was also on the play in, uh, in game number one. So uh, both players going to start seven cards. And if Alex wins this one, he will be the winner of the Four Horsemen Popper Tournament. And that is quite an accomplishment if you looked at the field of players. Like I said before, 50 players started with this tournament. So it was really, really big. And now only two remain, Tom versus Alex. Tom can feel the pressure probably. He needs to win this and starting here with a flying man. So this is a good start for Tom. This is what his deck wants to do, put some pressure on. Let's see if Alex can answer with the chain lightning, for example, starting with a mountain just a pass though. So this is good news for Tom. If he can find, for example, an unstable mutation, he can start swinging in for some serious damage. Just gonna wait and see what Tom's gonna do here. Going through his hand. I believe he's got six cards in hand now after the draw. Attacking for one, so putting Alex on 19. Playing a mountain. Can he find a Sephir Falcon, for example? He cannot. Passing turn. Alex here finding an island. And he's just going to pass. Seven cards in hand. Let's see what Tom can do. His deck kind of needs four mana because then he can start playing his Azur Drakes and Ghost Ships. Attacking here for one, gonna put Alex on 18. There's a Mountain tapping three. There's a Jalem Tome and a pass turn. Four cards in hand here for Tom. And Alex now having eight. Playing an island. Maybe he's going to cast a Jalum as well. Tapping a red. Chain lightning here on the flying man. That's kind of nice for Tom because he was able to deal two damage with the flying man and it was able to eat up a chain lightning. That's not too bad for him. Pretty good value from that one flying man. And there we see Tom using the Jalum Tome. Okay, so no land number four. No Azur Drake, no Ghost Ship. This is good news for Alex. Discarding a Jalem Tome, playing an island, and passing the turn. Okay, so giving Alex some breathing space. Alex playing land number four. Now remember, he's also playing with Azur Drakes. Passing the turn, though, cannot find a creature, it seems, to play out. He also plays with Primal Clay, for example. So Tom here untapping. Four mana, that's kind of uh, the moment that his deck starts to work because he can start casting the Ghost Ships and the Azure Drakes. So that's basically what I'm expecting here from Tom. Four cards in hand, it seems, looking at that white dice. Playing out a Mountain, tapping four. Playing out a Ghost Ship, okay, here we go. So there we have the Flyers, three cards in hand for Tom in a pass turn. Is Alex going to play a counterspell here? Ooh, Active Volcano. Quickly getting rid of that Ghost Ship. Active Volcano, of course, a card coming in from the sideboard. I expect both players have boarded in their Flesh Floods and Active Volcanoes. Here we see an Oasis. You can tap it to prevent one damage. And he's tapping four. And there is a Ghost Ship of Alex. The Battle of the Flyers has begun. Or are we going to see an Active Volcano from Tom? Not yet, it seems. He's going to untap first. Drawing a card for turn. Four cards in hand then, it seems. Five mana open. Tapping four. There is another flyer. The Azur Drake hitting the board. 2-4 from Legends. So that can block the ghost ship from Alex. Passing the turn to him. There is a mountain by Alex. Tapping five. Ooh, Pyrotechnics. The Drake is a goner. That means an attack for two. Tom's going to drop here to 18. First points of damage dealt by Alex here in this matchup. Alex also on 18, by the way. Both players on the same life total. Alex with three cards in hand. There we see an Azur Drake. 
So Tom keeps finding those flyers. They're so important in this matchup. There we see another island here. There's an active volcano taking care of the Azure Drake. So Alex has so far found two active volcanoes and they've been great for him. Look at that, playing a second ghost ship as well. A lot of pressure from Alex here. Tom is now on 16. Next turn, he could drop to 12. Has to jail him, Tom, of course. Has to find some active volcanoes. Alex really putting on pressure here on the life total of Tom. Tom tapping five pyrotechnics. Okay, getting rid of one of the ghost ships. That's good news for Tom. He really had to do this. Oh, he's preventing a point of damage with the Oasis. What a play by Alex. <laughs> oh, I forgot this as well. Oh, and this is the thing with these formats. And I don't see this as a misplay, Tom. Well, it is, but you know what I mean? What I want to say is... When you play these formats, how often do you play Pyrotechnics? How often do you play with Oasis or against Oasis? So, uh, wow. And this is really a great moment for Alex, of course. And this could be the change in the match. Now he can swing in for four. Tom's going to drop to 12. Just to clarify, I didn't think about the Oasis uh, either. I was like, okay, you're playing the Pyrotechnics. Ship gets killed. Move on with our lives. But then there was... That one oasis that changed the entire uh, situation here. And Alex also playing a primal clay, by the way, a 3 3 creature. And now Tom is really, really behind. He's on 12, playing a Sephir Falcon. Probably gonna use that as a chump blocker unless he's got an unstable mutation now. He does not. Passing turn. Things are looking very dire for Tom. I'm expecting Alex to go all in here, attacking with everything he has. Is Alex going to jump? He is not. He's going to take seven. Going to drop to five. There is a tap again for three. There's a Brothers of Fire making matters even worse. Brothers of Fire can kill the Sephir Falcon next turn. And also attack because it doesn't have to tap to activate its ability. This is really bad news for Tom. Tom needs a miracle here in the finals of Four Horsemen Popper. Is Alex going to be our new champion? Tom discarding a card, drawing a card, finding an unstable. Okay, at least that's something. So it's now a four, another unstable. <laughs> I like this. Going out with a bang here. So that one Sephiroth Falcon is now a 7-7. Seven, seven. He's attacking with it as well. Alex dropping to 11. The problem here is that Tom is so low. I think if Tom attacks with everything, he's going to win this. There we see a Fisher on the Sephiroth Falcon, and that is game. Congratulations, Alex, for winning game number two. You are the Four Horsemen Popper Champion! Well done, my man. You win a unique altered Protocol Sorcerer, a Tim the Protocol Sorcerer. And uh, wow, and of course, the eternal glory for winning a 50... Um, 50 uh, big, how do you say that? 50 Wizards tournament, I don't know. I'm, I'm speechless. Alex, well done. Tom, man, especially game two. It just wasn't going your way. And that Oasis play, it will probably haunt you for a while. But um, the good news is we've got more tournaments coming up. So you can just sign up and, uh, yeah, reach the finals again and then win it and, and forget all about this one. Anyway, congratulations, Alex, man. Well, well done. And um, you've shown to all of us that we need to play Oasis more. I think that's, that's the lesson learned from this match. And um, yeah, like I said, congratulations. The Tim the Enchanter is coming your way. It's a limited edition, so take good care of it. It's going to travel all the way to Canada. And also uh, a big uh, thank you, of course, to Tom as well. Tom, you've done super with your deck. Uh, you've reached the final, so that is quite an accomplishment and something to be proud of. You, you made a beautiful, beautiful deck. Both of you have. Uh, for now, I would like, like to thank you for watching another episode right here on Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And I hope to see you next time. And before you go, please consider to like, subscribe, uh, comment, and share here on this video. All these things are free and they really help the channel move forward. And then there's one last thing that you can do, and that is you can become a member of the Timmy Talks Patreon page. You can see the Patreon page here right in front of you. 
Uh, the cool thing is you can join our Patreon starting with just $1 a month. And with that money, you really help me to keep Timmy Talks afloat. So please consider joining. Um, the cool thing is the perks. I got to talk about the perks. If you join the Timmy Talks Patreon, you can also join the tournaments like this one. You also get exclusive access to the Timmy Talks Discord server. And of course, your name will be mentioned in the end scroll. What end scroll? This end scroll. Thank you to Samba Kazee.